Hey everyone, it's Amador and welcome back. Today is the sneak preview day two for CC Design's February release. And we have these goo 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 spring things clear stamps from the shop. Here is the stamp set. I don't know if I was even supposed to show that. Oh my gosh, maybe not. <laughs> I am also using these carrots that I got from the Easter accessories, rabbit accessories, I totally forgot, bunny accessories. I'm over here laughing because I think I wasn't supposed to show the stamp set. Anyway, I also used the treat bag die to make this because I wanted to make a little treat bags for either work, co-workers, or friends. And of course, off camera, I did not show you the right colors that I'm using. I'm using Y04, YG00, YG000, and Y13. Here's the Y04. I started with the YG000 to lay down a layer of ink just to be able to blend. Now, it looks very bright on camera, but once it settles, it is actually much lighter, uh, the Y04. I use the YG00 to blend it out a little bit, and then I finish it off with the YG... What is it? Quadruple zero. That's what it is. <laughs> So it looks a little bit saturated on the paper, but once it's done, it actually ends up looking super, super cute. Now, for the beak, I did experiment with YR21, YR7, I'm sorry, YR21, Y17, and Y32. Why? Why not? But since I like the color combination, I went ahead and I did all the little chicks in the eggs to, at the same time, because once I know that I like a set of colors, I will go ahead and use them uh, at the same time for the same area for whatever areas I'm going to color in those colors I did test them off in a if you see at the bottom right there below the bottom chick in the egg I tested them to see if I like the combination so I just went ahead and went for it now I did add here's where I added a little bit of the Y13 just to give it a little bit of um, more of an orangey ish kind of foundation to give it a little bit better shadowing I feel that that's how it just turned out better for me and it also looks, it almost looks on camera a little bit chartreuse, but it dries down a softer yellow than it looks. Because remember, when you're coloring with Copic markers, it is how it starts, but then it dries into the paper. Now, for the eggs, I'm using C3, C1, and C00 for the shadowing, because even though you want it to be white, you want to give it a little bit of shadowing because everything has shadowing already and you want it to give it a little bit of dimension. That actually kind of makes it appear more white. Now here I am using the oranges for the beaks. And like I said, I used Y17, Y32, and YR21. I don't know why. I wasn't realizing where I was showing the markers in the camera. But yeah, it this happens. It's funny when I'm recording and I'm just excited and I'm doing something because you're so, so cute. They look like little kids in like a spring, like a spring, um, what are those uh, little plays or something in school? Because I remember those when I was a kid and I have little nephews right now. Soon they'll be starting school and I get to see cute things like that. Now for the bunny ears I used and the little girl skirt, I used W. 3, W1, and W00. Again, I wanted to have a little bit of sh a shading. I wanted the ears to be yellow, but I really liked how they ended up looking just a little bit off, like, beigey kind of cream kind of situation. I have no idea how to explain it, but I really liked the way it looked. Um, I went ahead and I used the R30 for the ears, and I felt that it wasn't dark enough, so I added just a little touch of R32 on the on the inside i'm sorry r20 and r32 i think i used for that just to kind of give it a little shading but then i felt that it was too dark so i went ahead and got my colorless blender to kind of white out color blend in a little bit more of that and you see right here it did start to fade a little bit and that's what i wanted just a touch of little touch of pink and i went ahead and start it went back with my r quadruple zero just to, just to make sure it stays pink but not too pink I don't know how to explain that. <laughs> so for the hair, I'm using E34, E35, and E37. For And I use the same colors for both of the little kids' hair. I, I'm still, for some reason, I just can't get my, my zooming in where I have my colors. But at least I have the caps right here facing up. 
I do have to move on occasions the image because it's easier for me to color. I know some people can awesomely color without having to rotate their image, but it helps me with things like this, like the hair, like the flicking for the hair and everything. It's just easier for me. So, and that was another reason why I didn't speed up this video as much. I have received some um, comments from people saying that it just, when I do it really, really fast sped up, that's why this video is about 18 minutes long. I It is sped up, but not as much as I normally do. People aren't don't get the full the full aspect of like what exactly I'm doing because it's going so fast. So this one's sped up, but not so much. I'm trying to remember how long it took me to make this card specifically. But like I said, this video is sped up and it's down to 18, 19 minutes. Because like I said, this way you can see better of what I'm doing. And I'm kind of taking my time to make sure that I'm doing things. Now for the skin, I'm doing the same skin that I always do basically. E000, E quadruple zero, E01, E02 because I just, it, it, I like the coloring that it gives me. It actually gives the these kids some pigment. <laughs> uh, but I do start with the E quadruple zero just to lay some, some, some ink down. Like I said, I've learned that, at least from my experience, that it's easier for me to lay down the lightest layer just a little bit so it's easier to blend the darkest one out. Here I am using the E, E1 and it was E... Yeah, E1 and the E2, just to give it a little bit of, of coloring, as you can see, because all of that is then going to be blended in with my, um, this was the E0. Once it, you just lighten it up. And the last one that I will use is the E quadruple zero to blend it all in. Bring it into the faces right here. But I this is the E triple zero. And it's just a matter of blending. I've, I've, I'm getting better. I'm trying to get better at my blending. Here I felt that I needed just a little bit of color because I don't know if I mentioned on occasions I forget to color hands. It's funny. I forget to color hands and ears sometimes. And the, it's happened where I'm at a finished project and I'm like, what's wrong? Oh, yeah, <laughs> ears aren't colored. So this is the E quadruple zero. And here I am just blending everything in, sh getting all the shading in to... Uh, and I do a little bit of a fleck on over the nose to kind of give it a little bit of dimension, as you can see more on the little boy right here. Now, the funny thing is I end up using the little girl and not the little boy because the treat bag the face of it i wanted to have those large carrots from the bunny accessories because i thought it would be a really really cute touch to have the sentiment hanging off of that here again i use the r30 this is my favorite for the blushy cheeks just to give it a little bit of color r20 i feel like it's really really stark strong and i go back in with the w1 just to fill in the little headband for the ears like i said i just wanted to have it a little bit more dimension and i really like the way it looked now i wanted to kind of have the girls little outfit in the same kind of colors i started with the r quadruple zero r zero zero but then i had to go in and add a little bit of the r20 to give it a little bit more color and you'll see the difference between the ears and the the sweater but i was literally going back and forth trying to I'm like, I don't want it to be too dark because I felt that it was too dark. Then it wouldn't go with the lighter pastels that I was working with on the on the rest of the images because I wanted them to to blend in, have lighter spring colors. You know, cute, cute kids in pastels are always cute, especially in the summer, in the spring with the cute little ears. But yeah, like you see at the bottom of the card right there with the oranges and the yellows, that's where I tested them out and I let it dry for a little bit so I can test to see if that's the colors that I that I wanted to use. And there I am just using the R20 and the R30 to lighten up the sweater to give it a little tone, a little definition. Just, you know, because I thought it would be cute. And here I am, I, I'm just basically contemplating what am I going to do with the skirt. I'm like, let me use the colors that, I, that are already out. So I use my warm grays. So I flick a little bit of the W3 just to kind of give the skirt a little bit more dimension like it has ruffles. And I try to blend it out a little bit. But I ended up liking the way it looked. Here I am using the W0 just to kind of blend it out so it's not so stark, so much of a stark color. So it kind of actually matches her ears. So here I am thinking, hmm, what am I going to do now? Oh yeah, I still have to color the clouds. And I use my warm grays again. And here I am, I'm not just coloring along the edge. I'm bringing the marker, my Copic, into the actual image. You see right here to give it more of a dimensional look. And this is the W3. I went a little heavy, <laughs> as you'll see. I went a little heavy and then I go in with my W00 to blend it out. Just to lighten it up, you want to blend it into the 
paper and this gives it more of a dimensional look it gives it more of a natural look as opposed to just lines as you can see the ones on the right and the, the difference between the ones on the right and the ones on the left the ones on the right are already blended in so they give it a little bit of softer fluffier cloud look I felt that it was a little too dark and then I went in with my colorless blend to zero just to kind of blend in a little bit more of the marker into the paper because I did get a little bit heavy handed and it worked, but I didn't want them to be rain clouds. I didn't want them to be full on rain clouds. The funny thing is I troubled and toiled over these clouds and I didn't end up using them on my project. So that was the funny part, but I left it in just to show you how I do the clouds and how I can boo-boo it up also and use my colorless blender again. I have the big bottle of colorless blender um, <laughs> because I, yeah, I go through a lot of it. I use it to correct my boo-boos and just to, you know, add lighter accents to my, my projects. But here they are. I am ready to die cut these with the Spring Things Clear Stamps die sets. But at the same time, I also die cut the treat bag die right here. And this is the front part. This is a little panel that goes in the front. But I'm going to use these cute, cute cloud and grass dies because I was going to originally have them cut out of cardstock. But I said, hey, you know what? Let's let's do some inking. And I end up using some of the ink. So here I am just kind of placing where I want them. I'm actually going to use this full thing to cut it apart in different layers. And then I'm going to add color to the layers. I had two cloud layers and I just, all I did was just move the die from side to side. I end up using celery, celery, celery stick and mermaid ink from Lawn Fawn and my little distressors to start in the color. Now I start the color darker in the, at the edge that's going to meet with the other one. And you see right here, I end up coloring the whole thing, just shading it in with the color and then just making it darker at the edges to give it a little bit more definition. And I just cut up that one panel and then I'm going to connect them all back in. I end up using just a little bit of lined paper to back it to keep it all together. I didn't want to use an extra heavy piece of cardstock because this was just to keep it together while I glued it onto the main treat back die. And here I am doing the same thing with the clouds. And I just start from the top to the bottom and I try to shade everything in to give it a lighter color. But I also go over the top, see right here, over the top to make sure that has the definition. And since you die cut them, they will fit right back in together. So it's like a cute little crafty puzzle. But here I am. I'm doing both of the cloud, st uh, cloud thingies on the top. And the third one is just going to be also the, the coloring of the top just to kind of make it give it a uniform look. And it still gives it a little bit of a cloud effect because the bottom of it is the lighter color. And I'm still working. See, I'm trying to rub it out because I am not the best at this. But here it is on the left, how I use it. I went ahead and die cut another little piece of paper because I was going to originally just glue it onto the treat bag, but I decided I need to, to set it on something so it doesn't end up being crooked. But first, I'm going to assemble my treat bag, which the die is also in the shop. You guys check it out. You need two pieces, and it also comes with two little tags that you can use on this, but since I was going to use the sentiment as a tag-ish kind of thing, I didn't cut out the tags. So here I am, I assemble them with using my tacky glue, and these tips are tips that I use from, that I got from Amazon, if you guys are interested, the Scrap Perfect tips, they go straight onto your glue bottle. Now, I do assemble, I'm weird. I, some people assemble the bottom first, I assemble the sides, and then I connect them. Why? I don't know, I feel that I get a more accurate layering on the base because it, you have to overlap it. So I went ahead and do that and then I just add this adhesive onto the bottom, slap the second part on top and then all I have to do is now just, I of course, you know, do a little burying to kind of make sure it sticks. And then I just adhere the two sides that haven't been connected yet with just a little bit of that tacky glue. And since it has this little fine tip, I can reach underneath that folded area and I don't have to bend the, the treat bag out. So you see right here, that's where I'm doing it right there. Easy peasy and you get a really thin line of tape, of tape, oh my goodness, of glue. <laughs> I think I need more coffee. Now, I'm just making sure I press everything together and in retrospect, I should have assembled the front part first. This is where I realized, oh, you know what? What if I don't get them perfectly on here? So this is when I'm like, hey, idea. Here's a little piece of paper of lined paper. I die cut it from the same little square 
and then I'm just going to layer it because it's going to go perfectly where it's supposed to land. And then this is what I'm going to adhere to the actual treat bag. And I love how it all just connects. It's like when you're doing a puzzle and it just fits perfectly because you have the right <laughs> the right piece. And I'm just layering it over. And since I did the darker coloring on the top edge of each one, it gives it a lot of dimension. And the funny thing is once I put my little bunny in my carrot, you kind of can't see this, but I had so much fun creating this. I plan to do this again in a larger format with these dies because they are pretty long. If I'm not mistaken, they're about six inches long for here. Let me measure them for you to be able to do um, do the a larger piece. They are five and a half ish. Yeah, about five and a half inches long. So you could do a full card card panel. Let's see here. Now, here I am just adhering it. And like I said, in retrospect, I should have <laughs> adhered that together and then adhered that to the front of that treat bag. But hey, you know what? You make it work, you make it happen, and you keep on going. But here it is, and it sets a beautiful little scene for the my little springtime, spring things clear stamp sets. And here they are. Now, I was kooky. Here's the sentiment and everything. I cut two because I thought I was going to make two. I decided to adhere these carrots that I cut from the hearts and dots papers paper pad also new into the release and then I just glued them on cardstock and then I fussy cut them around because I kind of wanted them to have that same little look as the die cuts and here I am just trying to figure out my placing because of my little limited size of the scenery I'm just trying to figure out my placing but I end up deciding how I'm going to do it I put some dimensional foam on the bunny because I did stamp the sentiment, some, some bunny loves you. And here I am just trying to figure out the placement because I don't want the sentiment to be covered and I also want those cute little ears to be covered. But here, look, this is literally my mindset. This is how I figure out what's going on. But I put on the little dimensional foam and everything on my carrot. These carrots are so, 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 so cute. And you can use them as like full on embellishments or in a shaker. And originally, I thought of using it as a shaker bit. Just throw in some sequins and call it a day. Here I'm using some Mayard's Jute Twine to make a little tiny boy, a bow, because I want it to look like the sentiment is actually a tag attached to the carrot. So it looks like a big carrot gift because it says somebody loves you. So if somebody loves you, they're going to send you a big old carrot. And I love how... I don't have to draw little notches on the carrots or anything because the little hearts on this paper make it look like those little notches on a carrot. It gives it dimension and it's super, super cute. So here I am. Now, I was going to die cut, I mean, cut a little hole in the sentiment, but this is the banner from the quad collage die. This little banner is a stitch banner and sentiment fits perfectly, but I didn't have the space for a little hole. So it was a bit of a conundrum. And all I did was end up just gluing the bow to it. Here I am just adding a little bit of dimensional foam in the center of this little sentiment because I wasn't sure if it was going to go over the bunny or under the bunny. So here I am just figuring it out, placing it down just for enough of it to show. And it still doesn't cover doesn't cover the little holes for you to hold onto the treat bag, which later on I did put some little cup, um, cut tissue paper. A little bit. And here we go. I am adding this tiny little bow. So I add... A lot of glue, well, not a lot because I don't want it to ooze out on the back of it to make it look like it's a little present tied to the carrot. Oh, cute. Oh my gosh, I'm totally in love with this. In the next project, I will make a banner long enough to have the little the little hole on there to actually tie a bow. And here I am just adding this cute little chick with a little bit dimensional um, foam and a little bit of glue to add it to the top of that. So there it is. Here is the sneak peek for the February release. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you guys think. And thank you guys for stopping by. Check out the shop. It'll be available soon. Bye, everyone.